Hey, this is Anthony with Revzilla TV, where you can watch, decide, and ride. Welcome to our motorcycle boots sizing and buying guide at Revzilla.com. So in this video, we're gonna walk through motorcycle boots from the ground up. We're gonna start with why you would choose a motorcycle boot over a regular boot or shoe for riding. From there, we're gonna get into sizing, and it's really, really simple. It's much easier than you might expect. We're gonna walk through that process, and from there, we're gonna get into the specific types of boots that I have in front of me. And I have really five key representations of five key categories. And if you like to get in the weeds, you can always click ahead, use the menu right here on your screen to dive right there right now. But in front of me, I have short boots. We're gonna to go to multi-season touring. From there, we're gonna to go to beefed up adventure multi-season boots. There we go to sport and race, and finally we're gonna round it out with MX boots, each of which has a distinct style, function, and protective benefit for the type of riding that you might do. Now at Revzilla.com, we hear from riders all the time. These are riders that haven't made the leap from a basic sneaker or a pair of Tims into a true moto riding boot. If you think about the benefits, once you get past style, which is many different motivations, different flavors you could choose, match your gear, match your bike, that's up to you. It really comes down to function and protection. Looking at the function of a motorcycle boot, it really interfaces with your bike, it's your point of control, it's going to work within your controls, and the way that that boot is shaped and the mixture of features that go into it really work within the realm of what type of riding you're doing. So adventure riding, which might be more rugged, track or sport riding, which is a different set of factors, or even boots that have functions that are going to be more for the sport or the everyday commuter rider. They do exist, and that's part of the equation. The other part of the equation is the protection factor, and to me, that comes down to riding being prepared for the crash, not prepared for the ride. Now you have to stay comfortable, but when you think about basic protective elements in a motorcycle boots, things that you're investing in, things you should look for as you make that upgrade, toe protection, heel protection, the way that the sole is designed on the boot, malleolus protection, which would be that small bone on your ankle, both inside and out. You'll see that even in this boot in front of me, you can see the way that it's put together. These are all materials coupled with the main construction, which could be textile, it could be leather, it could be synthetic leather. They're really put in place to guard you against the bike, guard you against the ground, and then really when you talk about waterproof or non-waterproof, they guard you against mother nature as well as you're stretching this boot into a lot of different riding conditions. And that really depends on how you're choosing to operate within the riding setup. So when it comes to motorcycle boot sizing, chances are if you've bought a pair of boots over the course of your life, you're pretty well equipped to make a good decision. Remember, there's gonna be a size chart on every boot page, and there's typically a video for most products, so watch that video for any nuances around fit, if it runs narrow, if it runs wide, all of that information should be there. Now when you think through the sizing, you're gonna see one of two things. You'll see boots that are American sized, which are normal numeric ranges we see here in the States, and then you'll see boots that might be European sizes, which have size ranges that go from the 30s to the 40s. And again, when you see those, just refer back to the size chart on the product detail page, and it's gonna be pretty quick and easy to make that conversion and find the right boot size for you. Again, no surprises there. Also keep in mind that we do ship for free, over 39 bucks. There's never a restock fee at Revzilla.com. And if you're thinking that you might need to send a pair of boots back or make an exchange, just make sure that you take great care of them. When you have them, they have to come back in brand new condition. So be careful about walking around in them or scuffing them up before you send them back to us. So the first and most popular category of boots in our guide are what I consider short boots. These are going to be boots that don't have shin protection. They come in a lot of different flavors, a lot of different styles. And remember, we have a detailed breakdown video of every boot just about on Revzilla.com, so watch those, and you always click here and subscribe to us at Revzilla.com as well. Now, for a short boot, the upside here, the upside of choosing one, typically less of an investment because it's less material and they're a little bit less technical. Also, they're gonna be better boots for on the bike or off the bike moving around. A lot of times they're a little bit more of a medium sole. You're gonna be able to walk around in these when you're touring, when you're at the office, if you're commuting, a lot more flexibility there. And the third reason you might choose a short boot is really the fact that they come in so many different styles that even under a pair of jeans, you're not gonna look like a stormtrooper when you get off the bike. Now I have three examples in front of me. I have an Icon Super Duty 4, which is really a Timberland on steroids. I have a TCX X Street Waterproof, which is a waterproof boot, leather on the outside, really designed to look like a sneaker. And then I have this Dino, Dionese Dino C2B, which is really the short part. It's really a cut down, race oriented boot, extremely aggressive. They're all three different flavors that cater to three different types of riders, but you're gonna see similarities throughout. You see different types of interface points for your controls here on the shift panel, different styles of laces, 
semi-covered laces, exposed laces, completely covered laces. You're even going to see different types of soles. Here with the Super Duty, a work boot style sole. This is really a sneaker with motorcycle protection built into it. And then here on the Dyno, you, you're going to see a full-on race suit that came right off of TRQ or Torque Pro boots from Dionese. Now, remember, the downside of these boots is that they are short. They're going to limit you from the shin protection side of things. And again, I always recommend you dress for the crash, not for the ride. So especially for longer distance rides or guys that are commuting every day, it's really the question that you have to answer for yourself is, am I okay giving up that shin protection? But a lot of solidly Solidly priced short boots will have malleolus protection, they'll have heel protection, they'll have toe protection, and they'll be a huge leap forward over a regular pair of Timberlands, a regular pair of sneakers that you're just going to hop on the bike and go with. So now that you have a good idea of the things you should consider when you're going to make that investment in a short boot, the next step in your journey is to click right here, visit the short boot category at revzilla.com, and remember we have detailed breakdown videos, we ship for free, and there are a ton of rider reviews so you don't have to take my word for it. So when thinking about touring boots at Revzilla.com, we think about a few key things. These are typically taller boots that are really designed for multiple season use and universally styled. You can see three key styles in front of me. You have a Dainese, you have a TCX, and here's a Tourmaster. All three different distinct styles and price points. Now the advantages of a touring boot are going to be that they give great protection and they're typically comfortable for on or off the bike, designed for longer distances. You'll see a mixture of waterproof linings, you'll see a mixture of Gore-Tex as you make a further investment. Again, boots that are good for a lot of different riding scenarios, a lot of weather conditions, and they steal some of the DNA for the more technical boots from an adventure or race category, but you're typically not getting some of those crazy off-the-charts factors that you're going to have to make more of an investment on. Now, the downside of a touring boot, and really there aren't many, one of which being they're typically more black in nature, they're a bit more universally styled, they're not as aggressive, and again, the other downside, and I don't look at it as a downside if you're really looking at making the investment, is they're a little bit more expensive. You're usually looking for a good touring boot at that 150, 200, 250 plus dollar price point. Now, if you look in front of me, I have three very different boots. I have a Dionese TRQ Tour Gore-Tex, which is much more of a sport flavor, Italian inspired. And notice it takes some, some elements off of the Dionese race boot side of things. It's also using Gore-Tex, which is the top of the food chain when you talk about waterproofing. It's guaranteed for life. You also see Gore-Tex in this middle boot. This is a TCX X5 Plus. Still an Italian boot, but much more of a classic style. Beefy protection on the toe and the heel, a full height boot with shin protection. But again, you're not getting those ex external hard parts, but you're getting a very very seasoned boot that can be put through paces in a lot of different scenarios. And the last boot, as a quick example just to compare to these two, is more of an entry price point boot. This is the Tourmaster Solution 2.0. You'll notice it's still leather, it's a little bit less technical in its construction, it's going to be waterproof, not Gore-Tex. So it's still going to be waterproof, but it won't be as breathable. But again, you're making a sub $200 investment. So whether you're commuting, whether you're doing multi-season touring, or whether you're doing extended touring, there are different flavors of touring boots at Revzilla.com that you could choose to suit your needs. It comes down to style, it comes down to investment, and it comes down to function. So the next step in your touring boot journey should be to click right here, visit the touring boot category page at Revzilla.com. You can watch detailed breakdowns on any of the boots that we do carry at Revzilla, and you can also read other rider reviews to get a good sense of how these different types of boots are performing for different types of riders. So when thinking about an adventure touring boot, you're really looking at the mixture of a classic touring boot, which is full height and typically multiple season, in a lot of cases four season, married with a lot of the DNA that comes from an MX or off-road style boot. Now if we move back to the two boots in front of me, you're going to see again those two distinctly different styles. Still full height protection, they're both Gore-Tex boots, which again gives you that better comfort breathability factor for longer distance riding. They're still both going to be leather. Here's the key difference though. On the Canyon, it's around that $350 mark, you're going to see one buckle for support, you still have the full height protection in the shin, and really a beefy, more off-road style sole. Now when we go over to the Toucan, now you're really seeing a lot of the raced bread and motocross inspired DNA from Alpine Stars. Molded pieces, hardcore cam lock buckles, a lot of TPU and TPR around the shin and on the inside of the boot, and again, it's a really beefy sole as well. So there are different flavors, even with an adventure, that you can make that investment in depending on the type of rider that you are, depending on if you're spending more time on-road or off-road, and really depending on your style. Now, the downside to an adventure boot, especially if you're not going to be riding in adventure conditions all the time, you're still getting the benefit of all that protection, but you've made more of an investment, 
It's typically a stiffer boot that's gonna be a little less comfortable walking around off the bike, and then they tend to be heavier as well. And the weight just comes with the added functional and protective components that are put in place to keep you safe in those extreme conditions. Now remember, the next step in your journey, if you wanna continue your quest for the right adventure boot for you, outside of giving us a shout, click right here, visit our adventure, or what we call our ADV boot category at revzilla.com. You can watch detailed breakdown videos on all the videos, all of the boots that we have, and you can also read other rider reviews and see the experience that hardcore riders are having with these super top of the food chain, multi-season, multi-sport products within the boot line. When you're looking at motorcycle race boots, you're really looking at very technical boots that are purpose built with the racetrack in mind. The benefit of that is that it's a boot focused on comfort, it's focused on protection, and it's focused on being in the tuck position going 200 miles an hour. Now again, that is all underpinned by being built to protect you if you happen to have a get off at a high rate of speed on the track. These boots are built with replaceable parts, replaceable protectors that are meant to keep you safe if you're gonna go down. When we think about the downsides of making the investment in a race boot, one is that you are gonna make that super top end investment in a very specific and technical boot. The nice part is a lot of pieces on a race boot are very replaceable, but again, you're still paying a lot more than your typical right off the shelf sport or street boot. The other key disadvantage of buying a race boot, and it's really thinking through the application side of these, they're very specific purpose built boots. So they're meant to be comfortable when you're in the tuck on your bike, but outside of that, they're not meant to be walking around. They're not meant for really long rides, even in twisty roads for an extended period of time. They are purpose built for the racetrack. Now, if I look at the three examples I have in front of me, and I do have one example that's a little bit different and a little bit less technical, I'm gonna start with my top of the food chain, Alpine Star Super Tech R, one example of a phenomenal race boot. Inner booty design, which is a choice from Alpine Stars. All of these boots are built to have your suit that tucks right into them. Notice, replaceable slider, very clean in its design. There's vented boots or vented versions versions as well, and you're going to see that beefy shin protection. Moving over to the CD, you're seeing a lot of the same elements, but there are a few key differences. The key difference here is that there's no inner booty design. All of your tightening and tightening aspects are built into the outside of this boot. You see the techno fastener system, but again, all these components that have screws on them are going to be replaceable. So remember, when you're spending three, four, five hundred dollars on a boot, you have the ability to maintain the boot, replace those parts, and keep it riding longer. Now, the third boot I do have on the table is for you guys out there that say, I want a crossover boot. I want a boot I can take to the track, but I also might ride some twisties or dress like a street racer. And this is something called this TCX S Sport Tour. Leather boot, steals a lot of DNA from a track boot, toe slider, big ankle and heel support, as well as a shin support. But again, this is not a $400 boot, this is around a $200 boot. So this would be the difference in the style and functionality for a boot that can cross over, or a boot that's more sport oriented, or sport on the street oriented, versus something that's really designed specifically for the track. The next step in your journey, if you're continuing to look at race boots, or you wanna see more of the sport oriented side of things, is click right here to visit our full height race boot section at revzilla.com. Remember, we do a detailed breakdown video for just about every boot we have on the site, and you can also read other rider reviews to get a sense of the experiences that riders are ha having on the track with these super high-end boots. So when you're thinking through choosing a motocross or off-road style boot, you're really looking at buying a tank for your feet. These types of boots are designed to guard your feet against impact, but also designed to guard your feet against your bike and the fact that you're gonna purposely be taking your foot off and planting it on an obstacle or planting it on the ground. Now, functionally, these are beefy, heavy boots. Not a lot of time is, per is spent investing in waterproofing because you're riding them in scenarios that are typically not in the rain and it's okay when they get wet. But when you look at it, even in the Tech 3 from Alpine Stars, which I consider more of a mid-range boot, and then something like the CD Crossfire 2 SRS, which is an apex predator in this category, you see similar functions, and when you're moving to the more expensive boot, you're just getting more protection and more replaceability. Now, the pros of these boots, again, they're purpose-built to take a beating, and a lot of parts are going to be replaceable. The cons would be they're stiff boots. They're stiff boots that are going to be heavier, and walking around off the bike is going to be a little bit tougher. Again, they're purpose-built to be on the bike and taking abuse, and they're purpose-built to last a, a really long time if they're well-maintained. So while both of these boots share similar DNA, there are some key differences. Remember, at that mid price point level, you're still getting a leather type boot. This boot has a more traditional application on its sole that is replaceable. But again, you see cam lock buckles, big shifter pads that are beefy reinfor beefily reinforced. And then up here along the shin, you're going to have a nice big TPU to give you protection. 
And when we move over here to the CD, you're going to see similar components, but it's a bit more aggressive in its design, a bit more technical. More replaceability, you have more adjustability going up, and then even the thermoplastic, the way this boot is molded together, it's just a very different construction. And notice that it has this joint in the middle that's going to limit your range of motion. Again, just a much more technical boot that's designed to be a greater investment, but perform better, protect you better, and be more maintainable in the long run. So the next step in your journey when shopping for MX boots is clicking right here, visit our MX boots page at RevZilla.com. Remember, you can watch detailed breakdown videos of any of the boots that we carry. You can read rider reviews and see what riders before you have said when they bought or made the investment in different styles of boots that we do carry. Now, quick note on care and maintenance for any boot that we've shown you in the video today. Remember, whether it's textile or whether it's leather, boots are very, very durable and should last a long time. Many times, a warm, damp cloth to get main, many of the surface materials or mud off the boot is gonna be all you really need. And the other key point I can't impress enough after you're done replacing any parts that you might break over time is that if your boot is wet, never, never dry it with a heat source. Always let it air dry. We hope you learned a good deal from our motorcycle boot sizing and buying guide today, regardless of the type of boot that you were looking for. Hopefully, we gave you a great starting point that you can then dive into your quest of finding the right boot for the right application for you. Remember, if you have any questions, shoot our Gear Geeks a line. See us at RevZilla.com or 877-792-9455. Keep in mind that we do ship for free and returns are very painless. Thanks for watching our motorcycle boot sizing and buying guide. I'm Anthony. We'll see you next time.